Welcome back to the third and final episode of Getting Started with Raspberry Pi. I'm Sean with SparkFun Electronics. On the last episode, I showed you how to connect the Raspberry Pi to Wi-Fi and then post something to Twitter using Python. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to connect a temperature and humidity sensor using I2C to the Raspberry Pi. We'll read that information and then we'll post it to Twitter. You'll have your very own tweeting weather station. Let's get started. For this project, we're going to be using the same configuration on the Raspberry Pi as last time. Make sure that's connected to the Wi-Fi network. In addition, we're also going to be using an HIH6130 temperature and humidity sensor. This can be obtained from sparkfun.com. The first thing that we need to do is solder headers onto the sensor board. Then take the sensor board and connect it to the breadboard. You'll need to use the jumper wires to connect VDD on the sensor to pin 1 on the Raspberry Pi, which is 3.3 volts. Then connect ground on the sensor to pin 6 of the Raspberry Pi, which is ground. And then SDA, connect that to pin 3 on the Raspberry Pi, which is SDA. Connect SCL on the sensor to pin 5, which is again SCL for I2C. For this, we're going to be using the I2C protocol. This stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit, which was built by Philips in 1982. It consists of two lines, a data line and a clock line. And each device on that bus needs to have a particular address. So the master, when it wants to talk to a device, it needs to send out that address over the data lines. In this case, the Raspberry Pi is going to be our master, and the humidity and temperature sensor will be our device. We're going to be using Python's SM bus package, which stands for System Management Bus. This was a protocol built on top of the I2C protocol by Intel in 1995. So let's go ahead and get started with installing that. Go ahead and boot up the Raspberry Pi. Once presented with a login screen, just log in. Remember that your default login is username Pi and password Raspberry, all lowercase. We want to edit the Raspberry Pi's blacklist. So to do that, type sudo nano etsy modprobe.d raspy blacklist.conf. What we're doing in here is we're going to comment out the blacklisting of the I2C module. This will allow us to actually load up the I2C module when we boot the Raspberry Pi. To do that, just put the pound sign in front of blacklist I2C-BCM2708. Save and exit by hitting Control X, Y, and Enter. The next thing we need to do is actually load up the I2C modules on boot. So go ahead and type sudo nano Etsy modules, and this tells the Raspberry Pi which modules to boot. In this file, add two lines at the very bottom. So just use your cursor, go to the bottom, and add I2C-BCM2708. And on the next line, add I2C-Dev. Save and exit by hitting Control x Y, and Enter. Now we need to install some I2C tools, which will help us debug the I2C bus. So just sudo apt-get install I2C-Tools, and let that install. Once that's done, go ahead and install the Python SM bus package. Do that by typing sudo apt-get install python-sm bus and hit enter. After that's done, restart your Raspberry Pi by typing sudo reboot and hit enter. Assuming that you have the temperature and humidity sensor connected to your Pi correctly, go ahead and type sudo i2c detect-y1 and hit enter. This should bring up a map of any available I2C devices in a table format. If it's connected correctly, you'll see hex 27 appear in the map. Notice that if you have an early edition of the Raspberry Pi, such as a Rev1, you need to type sudo I2C detect Y0 instead of 1 to make this work. Now that we know that the I2C device is connected and ready to go, let's log into our X windows. So type start X and hit enter. Now that we're logged in, Go to your file manager and create a new file. Let's name it temp underscore tweet dot pi. Hit enter to create that file. Right click on it and select leafpad to start editing. So for the first part of our Python script, we're going to import a few packages and modules. So type in from twython import twython. This is the same as what we were doing in the last episode when we were making calls to Twitter. Then type from smbus import smbus. Notice the capital letters here. This allows us to communicate over I2C, and then import time, since we're going to be calling some delay functions. Since this code is going to be a little bit long, let's divide up our stuff into sections. Notice that I'm going to put a pound sign in front of my comments. That indicates to Python that it should not actually run this code, or anything past the pound sign on that line. 
do a pound sign Twitter authentication or any comment you so desire here. And then app underscore key equals single quote, single quote, app underscore secret equals single quote, single quote, OAuth underscore token equals single quote, single quote, and OAuth underscore token underscore secret equals single quote, single quote. We will look up our Twitter authentication codes later and come back and paste those in. Here, we're gonna create our Twython object and just pass in the variables from our Twitter authentication. So just Twitter equals Twython, open parentheses, all of your Twitter authentication variables, close parentheses. Then we need to create some I2C globals. So for our address, it's the same address that we saw in that I2C detect tool that we ran earlier. So in this case, it's 0x27, and that just says use hexadecimal 27. Then create an smbus object by saying bus equals smbus1. The Raspberry Pi has two smbuses available, or two I2C buses. In the newer versions of the Raspberry Pi, you can use one here. If you have an older version of the Raspberry Pi, you need to use a zero. Since we're on revision two of the Raspberry Pi, go ahead and use smbus, open parentheses, one, close parentheses. If you want to use the little circle for a degree sign later on, then we need to use some Unicode character here. In this case, Python has a special built-in function where you can just type u, single quote, dash n, and then some sort of Unicode character that you want here. So in this case, we'll just say degree sign, which is something special in Python. Put that in curly braces and then end with another single quote. Just like any good program that runs forever, we're gonna encapsulate everything in a while true statement. First thing we wanna do during this loop is get the current system date and time. We're gonna do that by calling time.strftime. What this does is it actually gets the current system time, so in this case, whatever's stored on the Raspberry Pi, and prints it out in string format. The format that we want is going to be determined by our percent sign and then MDY, notice the capital Y, for month, day, and year, and that's gonna be divided up by forward slashes. Then a space, followed by the time format that we want. So capital H, capital M, and capital S for hours, minutes, and seconds. And you can have that displayed any way you want by mixing and matching those letters. That's gonna be stored in the variable date time. Notice that for this, anything we want to include in the while loop, we have to indent in by a tab. So that's why you see the giant indents underneath while true. So after we get the current system time, we want to read some data from the temperature and humidity sensor. To do this, you can look at the data sheet for the HIH6130 and determine how you need to talk to it in order to get data back. So what we're going to do is write a single byte to our bus here, and that's just consisting of the address and 00. So all we're doing is just basically telling the sensor to wake up that we're ready to read data from it. Then we wait for it to send data to us by calling a bus.read underscore I2C underscore block underscore data and the address we want to read from. Notice that the four at the end of those parameters say that we're going to be reading four bytes back from the sensor. All of that is going to be stored in the variable ANS for answer. Unfortunately, the humidity and temperature data does not come back in any sort of human readable format. So we have to do some math on it to get it to something that we can understand. The humidity data is actually stored in the first 14 bits of the answer. To get that out, we need to perform a bitwise AND operation on the first byte of answer and hex 3F, which is 00111111. Shift that over by eight bits, so that becomes your first byte. And then add that to the second byte in answer. So that forms the entire humidity data. Then we need to translate that to something that's human readable. According to the data sheet, we need to multiply this by 6.10 times 10 to the negative three. We can do that in Python by calling float on our scientific notation. Finally, we don't want to read anything after a period. We want everything in a nice whole integer. So we're going to call within curly braces colon point zero F, which says round everything after the period dot format HUMD. The temperature data is stored in the next 14 bits within answer. So to get that out, we need to take the third byte from answer, shift that to the left by eight bits, and then add that to the fourth byte in answer. Now, the last two bits in answer are not part of our temperature data. So we want to shift our temperature data to the right by two to move everything over. To get temp into a human readable format, we will multiply our current temp value by 1.007 times 10 to the negative two, then subtract 40 from whatever value you get there. 
Then we want to round again, but this time we want to keep one decimal point in our temperature. It just makes it look nice. So we're going to call the same colon dot one F instead of zero. That says round to one decimal point. Put that in curly braces, surrounded by single quotes, and then dot format temp. Store that back into the temp variable. To see if things are working for us, we want to print the humidity and temperature to our console. To do that, we're just going to call print date time, so that way there's a timestamp for us. And then on the next line, print temperature plus str temp. And what that does is converts our temperature, which is in a float value, to an actual string so that we can concatenate it with the rest of this, plus degree. And remember that deg is actually our variable for our weird Unicode degree symbol sign and then plus C because we're gonna be doing things in Celsius. For humidity, just say print humidity plus string humidity and then the percent sign. And then finally print a new line or print quote quote so that you can have some sort of delimiter between your sections. Finally, we wanna post all of that to Twitter. So we're gonna construct our message by concatenating a bunch of strings. To do that, store everything in some sort of message container, or in this case, MSG for our variable. Create your string, it can be whatever you want. So in this case, we're gonna say weatherbot here, it is, and then print out the date and time, plus the temperature is, plus string of our temperature, add the degree sign and C, the humidity is, and then print out the humidity, followed by a percent sign. Notice that I'm using a backslash to tell Python that I'm going to a new line, but this is still all under one command. Then update our Twitter status just like we did in our previous episode by using MSG, which contains our string that we just created as our status. Finally, we want to wait a while before our next reading. In this case, I'm going to say wait 60 seconds before it posts again. You can make this number whatever you want. So just chain 60 to whatever number of seconds you wish. It can be posting once a second if you want to annoy all of your followers, or it can be every day, every week, every hour, anything you want in here. Now we need our Twitter authentication codes. So go to apps.twitter.com on a browser. Once here, click sign in. Use your account login name and password to log into Twitter. If you are following along from last episode, you can just use the Twitter app that we created then. In here, click on API keys. Copy your API key, so hit Control C. Go back over to your Python application and paste it for app key. Do the same thing for API secret. Scroll down on that page to access token and copy that long string. Paste that in OAuth token. Do the same to access token secret. That's it for our Python program. So just go to file, save, and then exit. Double click on LX terminal to open up a console and type sudo python temp underscore tweet dot py. The first thing it's gonna do is make a reading from the temperature and humidity sensor. You should see that print out on your screen. And if everything went well, it should also post it to Twitter. And here it is. On April 1st, we made this post. The temperature is 22.2 degrees Celsius and the humidity is 18%. All I gotta say is it's dry here in Colorado. And that's it. Let it run and you should have your very own tweeting weather bot. It should post tweets once a minute with the temperature and humidity. That's it for our three-part series. I've shown you how to get started with the Raspberry Pi and a little bit of Raspbian. I've also shown you how to connect up a sensor to the Raspberry Pi, read that data, and post things to Twitter. What will you make? Send us your cool projects to feedback at sparkfun.com or on Twitter to at sparkfun. Thanks for watching.